Hello guys, let us today learn about the topic which is very important and not given at many places. So, let's start. The topic is on anorectal malformations and this is a diagram. This is a dental where the anus should have been but it is not formed. So, first of all you should know the basic terms. This is also called as imperforate anus or anal atresia. Now you should know what is cloaca because the embryology is very important to learn or to know this topic. Cloaca is the most caudal or the distal part of the hindworth. It is closed by a bilaminar cloacal membrane. A mesodermal urorectal septum divides it into primitive urogenital sinus vertically and anorectal canal sorry uh, ventrally and anorectal canal dorsally. The anorectal canal gives rise to rectum in the upper part of the anal canal. So, anal canal is formed partly by the endoderm of the primitive rectum and partly from the anal pit or the proctodium. Let us see the diagram. This is foregut, diagram of foregut, midgut, hindgut and this is the distal part cloaca. This is the cloacal membrane and this is proctodium, alim Toic diverticulum, yolk sac, stomatodium, mucopharyngeal membrane. So, it is from here. Septum will develop here and divide into two parts. Let us see. This is the lentoic diverticulum and this is cloaca. So, a urogenital septum, sorry, urorectal septum is formed which divides it into two parts and this is urogenital membrane you can say this or cloacal membrane now this urorectal septums divide it into these two halves the ventral one is urogenital sinus from which develop the urethra and the urogenital systems and the distal one is primitive rectum from which there is formation of endorectal canal. Now, if this is not developed, it will not reach up to the skin. This is anal membrane. It attaches here and absorb. So, in formation of anal canal, there are two structures which are required, the primitive rectum and the anal membrane. One more important thing, see here, if there is any communication between them or there is any communication between them, if it is not formed fully, there would be rectovesical fistula, rectourethral fistula or anything else. If this is not absorbed, this will lead to low anal fistula because this thing will reach up to the skin but this will not absorb. So there will be a dimple formation. Now, let us learn more about imperforatanus. It is classified into the following types on the basis of level of termination of rectum in relation to the pelvic floor. These are high or <coughs> which is above the levator ni, the low one which is below the levator ni and there is one more type which is not given in Malayan number. Still, it is there. Intermediate one which is partly within the muscle. Examples are low AV malformations. It is rectoperineal fistula in both the sexes. But if we talk about high fistulas, it is different in male and females obviously. In boys, it is rectobulbar fistula which is most common. It is bulbar part of urethra. Okay, The rectostatic fistula is more, I mean next one, the rectovesical fistula is least of the three. It is in blend, bladder neck and if it is rectovesical fistula, it has a very poor prognosis. In girls, it is rectovestibular fistula. Mind it, it is most common, not the rectovaginal one. Clinical features, what will you see in a patient or, or a newborn who is having AV malformation? First of all, 
he will not be able or she will not be able to pass the meconium if the meconium is present obviously there may be some dimpling or low fissure if it is present you may simply say it is a low defect if it is high fistula, there will be meconium and urine. No opening or just dimple may be seen. For abnormal opening can also be seen. Sacral egenesis may be seen and some associated anomalies which are called vectoral anomalies can be seen. Let us see what is vector anomaly. These are, it is a MCU question also. P4 vertebral anomalies, A4 anorectal anomalies. C for cardiac anomalies in which TOF, pathology of fellets and ventricular septal defects are more common. T for tracheal anomalies, E for esophageal anomalies, R for renal anomalies in which vesicular ureter reflex, undescended testis and hypospediasis are common. And L for limb anomalies in which radial ray syndrome is the significant. You should also know the difference between high and low types. The high one there will be no dimpling or opening seen at the skin level which, have, which we have seen in the first picture. In the low one there will be dimple or stenosis opening as we know by the picture. In high ones perineal and the buttocks perineal, perineal and buttocks are not well formed but in low ones they will be well formed. In high ones patient may pass meconium per urethra but in low ones, usually not seen because usually there is no communication in low types. What investigations we do? First of all, we do the investigations to know the level of the ARM. The most important investigation is lateral prone radiograph by the 24 hours of age of the baby. It will show the distal limit of the air within rectum. X-ray spine should also be done to know the other anomalies like sacral agenesis. Invertogram is also done in some places. This is not very important. Probably not done nowadays. But you should know what is invertogram. Let us see the picture of lateral prone X-ray. So what is the significance? Here at the dimple, we will put a probe and we will see Till where there is air. So we should know the distance between these two and calculate the level of air. So here is the probe, here is the air. Air should have been here, obviously, but it's not here. So it may be a high fistula because distal end of air is here only. What treatment we do in low anomalies? This is very simple to treat. We do anoplasty. Now, what is anoplasty? Remember the first picture, this is a dimple, low anal fistula. Again, we will give a cruciate incision over here. Open the mucus, mucosa of anal canal, MS. And we will stitch the mucosa with the skin. And this is the anoplasty completed. In high, high types, what is done is early colostomy with definitive repair performed month later. Obviously, because it is a high fistula, we may need some mobilization of colon, sigmoid colon, descending colon, maybe. So, first of all, early colostomy is done. After few months, we plan PSARP. What is posterior? I mean, this is PSARP, is posterior sagittal anorectoplasty. This is done with or without transabdominal mobilization of leptonome and the division of any communication with urine retract and the closure of colostomy at later stage. You should know one thing, low defects are easy to correct, as you know, but prone to constipation. High defects are difficult to correct, but prone to fecal incontinence. One more thing, there is a term which is called anterior anus. Although it is not imperforate anus, as it is not fully located within the sphincter mechanism, And is regarded as a part of spectrum of ARM. You should know what is anterior anus if somebody asks you. It's a part of spectrum of ARM, but it is not imperforate anus. Okay. Thank you so much.